Hi, Panos. It's uh, good to have you back. And, uh, you know, it's good to talk to you because it really is mind provoking. So I feel that uh, every time we talk, there's something that opens up and something I can get to think about and, and uh, something that we explore together in depth. So mm -hmm. here we are again, and uh, I'm going to let you start to take the conversation. And I might jump in now, then I'll be here for any, mm -hmm. as, as you may think, it's uh, useful. Yeah. Look, first of all, also thank you because knowing that we're going to chat, I also think, oh, wait a minute, oh, how are we going to, you know? So it's fascinating on both on my side as well. In other words, because whatever I might I might say, perhaps I've been familiar with it for many years. When I tell you and you respond in your way, I think, ah, oh, no, wait, oh yes, ah, oh, let me think about, you know. So it's, it's actually an enriching experience. So thank you. So for, you know, That's great. I mean, it's fantastic, right, to have these conversations. And so, and so what I thought we would uh, expand or explore today is to recap what we've done before. First, we identified that there is such a thing as an inner world. Yes. And it's not some abstract thing. You saw the cat, it was eating the lizard. It was, it seemed real, right? Mm -hmm. It was a real inner world, a parallel universe almost, right? Mm -hmm. Then the second time we spoke, we said, ah, there's a, there are parts to that inner world which are beautiful. Oh, me having lunch with my family, me, whatever, fa whatever wonderful things we want, which create beautiful states and we want those because it's like free drugs, right? We get all the endorphins and all that. Right? Then there's the other side. Oh, this can go wrong. Oh, this is going to happen. This is problem. And you get the equivalent states. You get depressed, you get frightened, health problems, all kinds of things. Right? Now, I would like to go one step further. And to draw a distinction, uh, as we were saying in the conversation prior, I would like to highlight the difference between the being that is, I will explain all this, and the being that I think I am. So let me illustrate conceptually first in Please. terms of ideas, right? So if you have a baby that's just born, you know, it's two days old, it's just born, it's clean, everything's happy, it's fed, everything. When you look at it, it doesn't look back at you and say, oh, there's a person there. It doesn't say anything. In fact, it doesn't say, I am here. There's nobody there. There's, I mean, something is there, but it's not a particular person. In fact, in the scientific community, experiments on babies cannot be done until about the age of three months or older, because it takes that long for them to register memories, impressions, and so forth for a reaction to take place. Before then, they just look. They are not looking, looking happens. There, there's something going on there which is not, it doesn't belong to anyone. So this being a particular somebody is something that develops with time. And obviously the first year, this first three years, the first seven years, and then as we go after 21, in fact, after 25, the brain kind of settles. And then from then on we're adults. And society expects things from us. And we're supposed to know how to behave, how to stop at red roadboards, how to pay taxes, how to do all these things, and we never question that. If I say to you, who are you? You say, Davide. You're not going to think, wait a minute, well, it depends. You know, <laughs> if you ask a person, who are you? They're going to say their name. And so behind this sound, in my case, panos, right? So if you make that sound panos, which is just a sound, there's no meaning, right? My whole body goes, yes. You know what I mean? It's almost like in some kind of a trance, and Thanos is like a magic sound, a, a magical spell that activates this whole thing. I am Thanos, I'm supposed to be Greek, I live in Cape Town, all these stories. So it's not just seeing the cat, I see my whole history, okay? Comes forward and says, it's me. Oh, and I'm Greek, oh yes, yes. All that stuff. Now, well, well it's not only that, it's actually more than that. Within that, just one, one more conceptual aspect. Within that thing called Panos, there are sub, there are parts. It's not, it's not a one solid thing. It's made up of components. For example, there's a part in there of a little Panos when he was a certain age, when he went to school for the first time and the parents walked off and he stood there crying and then, oh, I want to go home kind of thing. He's still sitting there crying, right? So that experience as a reference experience the, the, the sense of abandonment, the sense, the feeling of despair or being lost and all that kind of thing is active in me now. If I'm not aware of it, just like the cat, it influences my life. 
Running on the other side, as we did the previous one, if I think of consequences, or if I don't have enough money, or if the economy this, or if the other thing that, oh, this is, so I have this image of me now going into some problem area. So the self-image is the thing that gives meaning to all the other video material. And so today I would like to go into that, first of all, to register, to realize that, hey, wait a second, as much as I saw a cat, I also see videos of myself and they create specific emotional reactions in me. Some are positive, some are negative. But at no stage do I ever, at least talking for the majority of people, give myself the opportunity to dissociate completely from my self-image as a whole. So, so this is my. Uh, and what would be the purpose? Uh, to, to this, what would be the purpose of this associating okay. to the image I've created about myself? Okay. What would be the benefit in, of that? Sure. In the in the previous one, I think we sort of touched upon the idea of death. Okay, and. And again, not to be morbid, but, well, let's start from the idea of birth. From who knows what, two parents come together, right? Something happens. The next thing, two cells. The next thing, four. The next thing, eight. The next thing, 16. Boom, 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 boom. This thing, the, the, the structure of it is created. But then it gets born into this world. Okay, fine. The first three months is not a person. It's just something. It's, I mean, the parents say, oh, it's my baby, it's my son, it's my daughter. The parents say that. The baby doesn't say, I'm your son. It just looks at them, doesn't know anything. Okay? So the idea of a self hasn't been formed yet. As we get to the other end of the spectrum, towards the end of life, as we call it, as individuals, we say, a lot of people go, oh, oh I'm going to die. Oh, what, oh, what will happen? You know, oh, oh, how can I die if the world continues? And so we have all these ideas. Now, again... I'm generalizing, a lot of people have a lot of anxiety about the idea of dying. And I'm proposing, it's a suggestion, that it's only the idea of dying that is frightening. In other words, every night, everybody goes to sleep every night, right? Nobody knows we're going to wake up in the morning. But when we go to sleep, say, good night, see you in the morning, good night, happy, right? Wait a second, you might just have, this might have been your last breath, okay? But because we are convinced we're going to wake up, it's fine. But there's a thing, a final death, a final sleep, as it were. Right? Most people find that, uh, what can I say, debilitating, the very thought of it. Oh, I don't want to think about it, or whichever way. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, hmm, you know, somewhere, I don't can't remember where it was, I came across an ideal. What is the ideal businessman or the ideal uh, leader or the, the ideal human being and it was the way it was presented it was a person who is very functional in society who understands the rules he understands all the nuances he's so into every little detail but at the same time he has the luxury or the freedom every day for a certain amount of time to take off all ideas about self and the world, park them and be in this pristine state, just like he was when he was a baby. Now, when I'm talking about it, everybody is going to think their own ideas. So let, let's put it a different way. People who are religious, they speak of God, me and God. I'm suggesting that this idea of being behind all the thoughts and ideas is, oh, it's going to sound a bit weird, is what we're really looking for. Because let's examine, and again, this is my experience. You can tell me what yours is and we can find out. Let's say, I want something. Let's go back to the previous one. I want something. I start thinking about it. Oh, I want this thing. Oh, I haven't got it. Oh, what must I do? I'll need money. Okay, so let me open up this money. Where do I get money? Oh, I need this money. I'm going to move it from here. I do this and this. Uh, find it, order it. Eventually it arrives. I get it. In that, now, remember, in the process of wanting, what am I feeling? I'm feeling kind of like a wanting. Like I want it. I haven't got it. I want it. There's tension, right? The moment I get it, 
I got it. In that moment, all the tension disappears. And I call that satisfaction. But that is conditional satisfaction. In other words, I've created the tension through wanting and all that. And on the condition that what I want is delivered, I then give myself permission oh, to be satisfied. Until the next one. Oh, okay, now I've got this, I want that. And the thing continues, right? It's called advertising. To be simple, in simplistic terms, it's called advertising. You're sitting there watching a movie, suddenly something pops up. Oh, if you've got the latest car, you think, oh, yes, my car is old, I should get a new car. The next thing you stuck in the tension of wanting. What I'm talking about is the extreme opposite of wanting, which is complete satisfaction. What sort of satisfaction? Not the satisfaction of deep sleep, because there, yes, there's action, but there's also unconsciousness. We're not aware of it. I'm suggesting there's a possibility, if one is interested in such things, to recognize that there's a dimension of being which is, metaphorically speaking, behind thought. And in that dimension of being, whether you want to call it God, or whether you want to call it your deeper self, or whether you want to call it the source or reality, whatever word you want to use is irrelevant, because it's an experience, it's not a word. In that dimension, in that way, when one is that way, individuality is diminished. And then, strangely enough, out of this, almost what appears to be in language terms, avoid, all kinds of things come up. All ideas come from there. All creativity comes from there. All new solutions. In other words, it has nothing to do with the past. The past is memory. Memory will just keep going around in circles. It's the new, what Eckhart Tolle calls the now, what in Vedanta called the Brahman. So many words. The point is, this is everyone's experience, and I'm suggesting, once we've understood this in inner world, there's a level behind that, which is the level of that which knows in a world. So that's the kind of place where I'd like to go today. So let me, let me, wow, let me, let me wow. synthesize what I understand, you know, in here. Yep. Now, you, you've made the example of when we, when, when we are like under three months old in, in the beginning. And then you made the example at the end of our life when we're full of thoughts about what's going on. And at the beginning, we are yeah. not full of thoughts and we're just part of everything and we're just observing. Yeah. I mean, something is observing until we realize we are us. But now, what she's proposing here is that um, our potential may express itself much more when we don't think we're so significant and we don't let our significance take over our life let's say you know i like the the the, the circle of uh, i create my wants and then i satisfy my wants and i relax and then i create another want and then i satisfy that one and i relax and that seems to be life now what you're saying here is that we can exit that type of circle you know we can exit the whole circle by just uh, embracing the uh, in the, the being in, in embracing the being now let's let's focus on that and see how can we do that you know and and then and then and then you know yes. that's that's gonna be yes. you know the today video <laughs> right yes yes you see i find this so i can't tell you how exciting how fascinating how thrilling mm. this is for me and and i've looked at this from i've had the opportunity to explore a number of religions and I don't mean their dogma, I mean their practices, because it's the practices that give meaning to religion. Otherwise, if you just, you know, if you just a dogma, it's just words, nobody knows what it is. But if you do some practices, you have an experience and so on. So from a religious perspective, then my first degree happens to be in engineering, so I can speak about science, yes, from the scientific perspective. Uh, I have an interest, I'm hobbies, I do photography, art, so I have some understanding of creativity, okay? I used to teach, uh, what do you call them, gifted children, creativity. So I've done a little bit of that. I've done photography, I've done that kind of stuff. Then the other part of my life is all neurolinguistics, psychology, if you like, the psychology of the subconscious and all that. I said 10 years of research with ESCON, so, so I understand how minds work and so on. Out of all of this, and sorry, I do executive coaching, so I have a reasonable understanding of business. So I have a, a reasonably broad, and I've traveled the world, I have a reasonably broad view of how things work and what works and i can tell you one thing this is almost 
I'm saying it with certainty because it's true for me. Anyone can make up their own mind. The one thing, the one thing that is common to all of this is the ability to observe. If you're a good scientist, it's all about observing. Observing in finer and finer and finer detail. Obviously, sometimes it's calculation, sometimes it's experiments. The point is, you have to pay attention. You can't be thinking of something else. If you're an artist, in the process of observation, you get lost. There's a technical term. It's called being in a state of flow. There's a gentleman, unpronounceable name, Michale Chichen Michale, who wrote the book Flow. Okay, and people now have made it into an industry and they're consulting to business how to get people into the flow. Why? Because where people are in flow, there are five times more productive. Imagine a guy who goes to work, works on Monday and takes the rest of the week off and he's done as much as everybody else. That's phenomenal, right? So it's really significant. So now I'm going from the obvious, the, the benefits of all this, to something a little bit more spiritual, if you like, or something more personal, right? So this ability to observe is what in fact we've been using in our previous conversations i said hey tell me what you know about cats blah 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 stop observe i didn't say it but okay what do you see oh i see a cat so i turned your attention towards a visual uh, dimension and you said oh there's the cat it's got brown and white stripes and it's eating a lizard okay what else do you see i mean we could have gone on we didn't for the sake of time right so i kept on forcing you, as it were, to observe. Then we went into the next dimension, heavens. Okay, tell me something, you would like to have this. Okay, describe. Okay, now I'm going down the road. Wait, 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 go slowly. Huh? What do you see? No, I see the road, I see the first roundabout, I see the lake on my right, I see the second roundabout, I see the... So every time I kept encouraging you to observe, observe, observe. When we went to the hell, what do you see? No, I see a guy in a hospital, he's dying, you know, all alone and all that. Now, we didn't go that far then because time ran out. Now here, I'm saying the key ingredient to all of this is one's ability to observe because in the process of observing, the part of the brain that switches on is, how can I put it? I'm going to find, I'm going to try, I'm trying to find the words. It's the thing we want. When you say to me how, it's when you switch on the observing brain, that's how things happen in the direction we want to go. When the observing brain is on holiday, we are completely at the mercy of thoughts and things, and we are, in fact, not human, I would say, because the programming runs us. As soon as we turn our attention on the programming, then we can call ourselves human. So the key word of how is by direct observation. What's missing is how to do that observation. People call it meditation, they call it mindfulness, doesn't matter what you call it. The key word is direct observation. So now let me let me let me interrupt you right there, and because see, uh, I think you know you said something. You you made a distinction, you know, because sometimes we go on automatic pilot, you know, and uh, and and the yeah. system runs itself. I would say you know I've seen people being run by the system most of the times, you know, and then yeah. it takes me a little bit of time to show them that they're running on an automatic system and they have control yeah. over the system and not is not the system that has control over them and you're saying just for the sake of this conversation that by withdrawing for a moment and taking uh, altitude i used to say and look at the situation and and look at the details the more i tend to observe the situation the less i'm trapped into the system that runs itself yes. that's what you're saying let, let me let me show you something. I don't know if it's going to be possible for you to see. I'll try. I'm going to take off my glasses mm -hmm. and I'm going to move my eyes from left to right. Okay. What I want you to observe is the quality of movement. How do my eyes move? Okay, so I'm doing it now. From left, I'm moving my eyes to the right. I'm going to do it again. From left, I'm moving my eyes to the right. If you notice, they're jumpy. Now yeah. watch this. If I'm tracking my thumb, I'm doing exactly the same thing, left to right, but now I'm looking at something. I'm tracking it. Can you see uh, the, the no, no bump. It's completely smooth, right? right. Why is that? Because right. the the design of the muscles and the nerves that control the eyes are designed for tracking. They're not designed for scanning. Scanning, you just look. If you want to go across, boom, boom, boom. If you want to if you want to track something, complete. So what I'm trying to illustrate with a silly example is that 
the way this thing is designed is that if you operate it the way it was designed, it will deliver major benefits. But if you keep on, you know, it's like a car. If you put diesel in a petrol car, it's not going to go. If you don't, you know, so many things. So if we use this thing in the way it was designed, we then step to a different level of function. This is really important. I mean, so it's, so it's, let me, it's, let me, it's really let me, what people call biohacking. Which is, mm, let, me, let me synthesize this. So we're meant to track and we're trying to scan. And the point is yes. by scanning, we can only do just go so far because we're not meant to scan like everything and then things. It's not we're designed that way. It's not, yeah, so, it's not and, designed, but that, yeah. that in terms of uh, observation makes a whole difference because, you know, I have to look at details. And when I, when, I, when I have to search for something and look at that thing rather than trying to look at the whole picture together because, you know, we're not meant to be scanning, we're meant to tracking. And so yes. that means that even when we think, it's better to focus on something. We become more functional in the focus than we become functional in, now, in the observation of the landscape. Exactly. Now, what I've demonstrated for you was a physical thing. I had a hand and I was tracking the finger, right? At the mental level, the equivalent of that is a question. So let's play this game. We played it before, let's play it again. So I'm going to ask you, put your hand out like yeah. this and just relax. Relax completely, close your eyes and see, and of course this is for the audience as well, see if you can find when your hand is completely relaxed, there's no movement, the fingers are not moving, completely relaxed. Where does your hand end and where does space begin? Completely relaxed, absolutely relaxed. Okay, now. What do you find? Well, I, uh, <laughs> First of all, I have a memory of my hand, so I think of my hand as being there suspended. Yes. But I have a little bit of feelings of my uh, of my termination. Some of my, but exactly. some parts are not existing at all. But it, but I yeah. know there's a hand there, and I remember how it's formed, and I and I shape it in my That's mind. It. That's it. Now, if you notice the moments during these few minutes that you were busy doing this, the moments that you were truly observing. Not thinking, oh, I know my hand is here, I'm sure my hand is here, not thinking, observing. In that moment, your mind became very quiet because you were busy paying attention. Mm. You were looking for the finger, where the hell is my hand? As opposed to thinking, oh, my hand is here, I'm sure it's here. When all that mental noise stopped and you literally observed, in that moment, there was something that happened that suspended thought. Now, again, if you're familiar, if you're familiar, if you're not familiar, it'll take longer. But the fact is, questions activate the act of observation to get okay. you behind the thought. So now, now let me let me uh, schematize it for my mind and, and for some yeah, people yeah, like yeah. me, you know. So basically, the question yeah. gets me to focus on on uh, on observation. Now, yes. observation. To be real observation, it means uh, quiet my mind and focus on what I'm observing. So to be able to take a hold of my, even my wildest thoughts, you know, not take a hold of them, but to interrupt them, I need to follow the question and get focused on the observation. And by doing okay. that, I can wait, actually... Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry. Wait a second. We will come to the intensity. In other words... You have mild thoughts like where the hell is my hand versus my god what's happening if the thoughts are very intense we have to employ different means we haven't gone there yet but we'll come to that but continue no but just to just to say because you know our mind goes on automatic i'm, I'm following that train of thought you know we the system yeah. runs itself through us and that's definitely true you know if i don't focus on anything the system will take over and will run me on automatic pilot you know now yeah. to snap to snap out of automatic pilot that's what i'm looking at at this point in time yes. i can actually basically follow a question that asks me to focus on the observation and by doing that i get to yes. absorb of all the automatic stuff that happens in my mind. I mean, that's a good door out of being the victim of my own system. I mean, that's kind of something yes. that makes sense yes. in a practical level, you know, when it's down to a, a nutshell. Would you agree with that? So, so now let's, let's see the how in a, more gen, in a more 
in a more specific thing in different contexts. Okay, let's assume now I'm sitting at home and I'm worried about something and I'm trying to find a creative solution or something else and I'm really worried. One way to interrupt the worry is to take, let's say, for example, I'm thinking, oh, about the economy. We've spoken about this many times. Let's keep to that thing, right? Oh, what will happen to South Africa? Oh, my God. Will this government, oh, they went and borrowed money. Oh, what will happen? First, the flag comes up. Oh, I'm worried. The second thing, because of training and previous experience, I'm going to do the practice now. What is it that I'm paying attention to? To make it easier for me, I'm going to create a mental loop, like a stuck record kind of thing, of whatever thoughts are going through my mind. So I'm thinking, oh, what will happen to the economy of South Africa? I'm taking this now. What will happen to the economy of South Africa? What will happen to the economy of South Africa? What will happen to the economy of South Africa? What will happen to the economy of South Africa? Then I realize that the way that I'm saying it, the tonality, yeah, the economy of South Africa, there's a bit of despair in the voice. So I'm starting to focus on the experience of how this thought is framed, how it's formulated phonetically. Oh, the sound goes up, it implies anxiety. And if the sound went down, it's like, what will happen to the economy of South Africa? It's a very different experience. Right? No, no, let's stop there. Let's stop right then there I have second. the choice. No, but let's stop right there for a second. Now, so just to, for the, for the, for the people, uh, uh, like we call it the, yeah. the, the people on the street, you know, the people like the me, audience. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I'm concerned about, oh, the economy of South Africa, the economy of South Africa, instead of, trying to interrupt my thinking about the economy of South Africa, I focus even more on little details to tell me what that is talking about. So instead of trying to find another thought, to fight with that thought and change my mind, which doesn't happen, yes. I dive yes. right into that thought, the specific thought I'm yes. having, and I start to observe yes. what are the dynamics that That's are going it. on in that thought. So basically, it's not trying to get rid yes. of it as much as it is trying to observe no exactly yeah. what I believe is hurting me. And I start to observe yes. it, how it is, what are the tones. And as I'm doing that, I kind of snap out of the experience that comes out of the automatic pilot. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Any, anybody, anybody who's watching this, who had any experience with therapy, this is therapy 101. It's the, it's, the, it's the foundational block of any therapeutic intervention. Let me give you the bit of theory here. If I put my hands together like this, this is pretty much the size of a brain. So this is kind of like a brain. Foop, I cut it in half. This is half a brain. This is the front. This is the back. This is the limbic system. Sorry, can you? Okay, this is the middle part, the emotional brain. What happens when we dream? This is one theory of dreaming. It's not the only theory, but it's a reasonable theory. It says some activity from the brain stem comes up and activates some activity here in the limbic system, the emotional brain. This emotion, let's call it, is now looking for a, for a context. So it sends instructions. There are various parts. Let's assume here. There's an associative brain, the thing that looks for meaning. It says this emotion, oh yes, this feels like when, I don't know, I was on a walking on the beach or a dog was chasing me, so a movie starts playing called a dream. This now reinforces the feeling, which reinforces the video, and those two get into a loop. If we're dreaming, it's dreaming, but in normal day awareness, when I'm thinking about the economy, it's the same process. What's the process? A thought comes, the economy triggers the feeling, the feeling talks, and this thing starts winding up, winding up, winding up into a dismal, terrible state. What the observation does is it activates this part of the brain. This is the front, the human part. Context, right? yeah. And we're saying, hang on a minute, apply the function of this thing to interrupt that. So we're saying, now tell me, how does this voice sound? Mm. Suddenly you, you're activating a part of the brain that can observe. And you're therefore breaking this loop again. This is a very simplistic explanation, no. please. Anybody but, who's but got scientific speak. background, don't throw bricks at me. I'm just trying to illustrate a principle here, right? No. So no. the process of observation awakens the part of the brain that's human. Okay, so that's perfect. Let me let me let me close it at this because there's so much in what you're saying. I don't want it to be lost in in, in the process. But you know, this is what we can do actually out of uh, you know the today's uh, video. It's really you know 
interrupting our own uh, automatic pilot, our own uh, loops, you know, the loops that create with the between yeah. limbic system and, and our creative side. So with the frontal cortex injecting a question, we tend yes. to, to open up a different experience uh, completely using, different. using the same thought. That's the, that's the thing that I, I like for people to understand. So now at this okay. point, uh, my only thing would be, you know, try, try this and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and then, you know, you may write under the video, you know, what happened when you tried it, but I really yeah. think that this is more of a, a, an experience. So it's not something you can read on the book and get it, but I think getting it means to try it and, and to, to make try it, it work. Yes. To try it to make yeah. it work. So for now, I guess, yeah, go ahead. Just one last comment. Earlier you said, well, what if the experience is very intense? Mm. Like for example, uh, when rescue teams go into a disaster area, say tsunami hit or some earthquake or whatever, and there are people standing in the street, they're lost. They don't know who they are. Right. You can't talk to them. Who are you? Uh, now you've got a choice. You give them a slap bah, to get to get them to function, right? Or there's a process called EMDR. You say, look at my hand. And you force them to look at your finger. Hmm. In moving the eyes backwards and forwards, left, it's normally left and right, back and forth. So you can do other more complex figure eights and all that. It reboots the brain. Hmm. So you can have a physiological observation, hmm. which will reboot the brain to switch on and activate the psychological observation. The person says, oh, okay, I'm Panos, I'm, oh, sorry, the earthquake. So in other words, even in most extreme conditions where a person is really in shock, you can bring them back, as it were, by this process. And the means depend on how severe the problem is. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I see it, and I and I wanted to go by step by step. And now we give you give, 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 give a lot. We give give a lot, and I think I I I really would be curious to see how people will uh, use it. But you know, thank you very much for the for the for the generosity of uh, of uh, of the context and and yeah, yeah. I really appreciate. That. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to all the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk soon next time. All right, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Ciao, ciao, ciao.